Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being with us here on this uh, glorious day. Uh, I woke this morning and saw a on my Twitter feed, uh, and it was quote not a joke. Was five dollars and five cents uh, at a gas station in the state of Connecticut. Prices are at an all-time high. Inflation, inflation over a 40-year high. And our families across our state of Connecticut are feeling the pain of a government that's not paying attention to them. We see the cost of living continues to increase, the cost of oil, the cost of groceries, the cost of just trying to balance our family budgets is becoming more and more difficult. But yet yesterday, we had a U.S. Senator from the state of Connecticut in the capital city talking about oil companies because prices have increased by 300 percent and something has to be done to return those profits to the consumer. The same day, the governor of the state of Connecticut tweeted this, shows a $2.1 billion surplus, held that up as a credential, reason why he needs to come back. That's about a 450 percent increase over the last surplus he had. Using the same standard, you would think the party would say we need to return those over-collected taxes back to the taxpayer. But when given the opportunity during session of a $1.2 billion tax cut, the majority refused. Instead, they've offered about, when you take out the earned income tax credit and the re-election rebates, they've got about $400 million of tax relief, which is about 20 percent of the over-collection. Well, we're here today to tell you that the Republicans stand united in giving the re relief where it's needed, and that is in our taxpayer, our family's wallet. The wallet of the taxpayer must not be the solution to every single problem or initiative in the state of Connecticut. And when the government is in largesse, like it is today, it needs to go back to the middle and low income families are having difficulty making ends meet. They are feeling pain and struggling while government is swimming in cash. That's not right. And so once again, although we were rejected the first time, we are going to continue with this because the people of Connecticut are asking for it. They're asking for help and we hear them. And again, we're going to offer relief that is going to put the money where it belongs where it should have stayed in the first place, and that's in the taxpayer wallet. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over uh, to my colleague, Representative Vin Candelora. Thank you, Senator Kelly. Uh, as a member of the General Assembly, I'm embarrassed of what was done this past session with the Democrats' tax proposal that was uh, supported by the governor. You know, we knew going into the budget cycle that Connecticut was on hard times and inflation was on the horizon. And that's why in the beginning we came out very early on to a reduction of the gas tax by 25 cents, which thankfully Democrats embraced. But never did we believe with a $3.5 billion surplus that that was all they were going to embrace. We had asked for a diesel tax cut, which was denied back then in April. And we asked for it again, uh, upward of, to the end of session and it was denied again. And so as Senator Kelly pointed out, we're here today to remind everybody that we are not going away. Republicans are going to continue to advocate for more reductions in cost to our residents. Why? Because Connecticut could afford this relief. But the Democrats and this governor don't want to give it. You know, they left here on May 4th patting each other on the back thinking that they had a job that was all done. And they run around with their, their press conferences and bill signings. We have tweets now bragging about online gaming and pot. But 
we're, they're doing everything to avoid what's really important to the residents of Connecticut, and that is to address inflation and the rising costs. You know, come July 1st, we are going to be looking at increased electric rates, more increases to gas taxes, more increases to food costs, and an increase in minimum wage, which is going to impact businesses. And so we're calling on all of these increases to be met in kind with reductions. Um, so what our proposal is, similar to what we have uh, pointed out before, is we're seeking to reduce the income tax by 1% on our uh, individual filers of 175,000 or left, from the 5% rate down to 4%. We wanna expand the tax holiday to diesel tax, reduce it uh, by about 25 cents, and suspend the increase that is coming into play on July 1. Which, by the way, DRS has yet to tell the diesel companies how much that increase is gonna be and so they're unable to even plan for it. We want to eliminate the highway use tax. We want to reduce the sales tax to 5.99 and to eliminate the 1% meals tax. Additionally, we believe uh, that we should be providing more LIHEAP assistance to our residents. We need to look at increasing the income thresholds so that our middle class residents can also benefit from the LIHEAP program that has traditionally gone to uh, our lower income families. Again, why? Because we believe that this safety net needs to be expanded, at least temporarily, to give people the relief that they need in the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Joe Scully, President of Motor Transport Association of Connecticut, representing small business trucking companies. Ronald Reagan once said that businesses don't pay taxes, they collect them. So when we talk about this increase in the diesel tax and the highway use tax, that's a perfect example of this. Trucking companies are going to have to collect these from their customers. They have no choice. Their customers are grocery stores and gas stations and clothing stores. So your food is going to cost more, your gas is going to cost more, and your clothing is going to cost more. There's a lot of talk about who supports small businesses out there. If you support s small business, we need to uh, suspend this diesel tax increase. We don't know how much it's going to be yet. I think there's wide belief it's going to be a big number. The highway use tax, that's going to slam Connecticut small businesses. So if we want to be pro small business and pro consumer, we need to uh, eliminate the highway use tax suspend this diesel tax increase. The state government's own numbers tell us we literally do not need them. There's no reason to have them, and it's making inflation worse if we get them. There is still time, so let's take care of this right now. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, so we're proposing $746 million uh, in relief, and this can be done without budget cuts. It will preserve the historic $2.85 billion in additional contribution to pay down pension debt and maintain the $3.3 billion state budget reserve, which is the maximum allow amount allowed by statute. So the money is there. The question is whether or not there's the willingness on behalf of the majority. Taxpayers have already given up more than they can afford and it's more than past time to return that money. So we'd like to remind people uh, that we're calling for a special session to do this. And we're gonna urge the public to join our effort. And we're gonna take this across our state and to let the people voice their perspective. We're asking them to join by signing a petition to add their voice they can also visit Affordable Connecticut, and that's all spelled out, .com. And we hope that the public uh, recognizes our initiative and joins our rallies for an affordable Connecticut.